What is phishing and how do you avoid it? My thanks go to Andrew Heinzman for his excellent article on this topic, which was published in Review Geek. And this is what inspired this video. To read the whole article, just follow the link listed. The Rise in Remote Work, Online Shopping, and Incompetent FCC Leadership Creates a Perfect Storm for Scammers. Phishing attacks are more common than ever before, and they regularly lead to fraud, identity theft, and corporate data breaches. But what is phishing, and how can you avoid it? If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and get involved. Phishing is actually a catch-all term for a variety of cyber crimes. But in its most basic form, phishing, pronounced phishing, is a scam in which a victim is tricked into sharing sensitive information or download ransomware. The majority of phishing schemes occur via email or SMS text messages, and they tend to follow a simple formula. Scammers will impersonate someone trustworthy, such as Amazon, a police department, or an employer, and tell you about a problem that requires immediate attention. Usually, the problem can only be solved by sharing credit card details, opening a malicious file, or typing your login data into a fake website. Phishing schemes can be very sophisticated. Scammers may learn details about your employment, subscriptions, family, or location before attempting a phishing attack. If you order shoes from a website that's been hacked, for example, a scammer may send you an email asking to verify the purchase of your login details. And if you're of retirement age, a scammer may impersonate a young family member to beg for bail money. To be perfectly clear, phishing schemes aren't just directed toward individuals. According to a recent Proofpoint report, over 55% of businesses fell victim to a phishing attack in 2020. More than half of these companies ended up with ransomware on their systems. And unfortunately, several of these phishing attacks led to a data breach which can expose customer information to hackers. Governments are also a huge target for phishing schemes. The CSIS maintains a long list of successful cyber attacks against government organizations, and many of these attacks were enabled by phishing. You need to realize that regular people are the first and only line of defense in a phishing attack. But Proofpoint's data shows that over half of all full-time workers know nothing about phishing. Clearly, businesses and governments aren't educating people on this topic, which is why it's so important to sit down and learn about it yourself. On the next several slides, we'll talk about the most common forms of phishing. First is email phishing. This is the most common form of phishing. A scammer impersonates a popular website or figure, like Amazon or a politician, in an attempt to steal your information or trick you into downloading ransomware. They may even create a custom domain name to make their email address look official. Spear phishing. Scammers who want to hit a specific target will resort to spear phishing. They gather information on their victim before impersonating a trustworthy person, business, or automated message. Clone phishing. Most phishing emails are sent to victims at random, but in some cases, a scammer will send you a duplicate version of a real email. If you receive an order confirmation, for example, a hacker may send a copycat order information containing malicious links or attachments. Pop-up phishing. Pop-ups are still a common vector for scams and malware. Modern pop-up phishing attacks usually take advantage of a browser's notification settings to send you antivirus warnings. 
angler fishing. The world of social media lets scammers angler fish for victims. Essentially, scammers will impersonate a public figure or company on social media. Someone may impersonate a YouTube creator to share scammy sweepstakes links in a video's comments, for example. Whaling. When a phishing attack is aimed toward an important person, such as a CEO, it's called whaling. These targets are often wealthy, easy to blackmail, or have access to a corporation's back end. Smishing and vishing. These terms describe phishing through an SMS text message or phone call. Most of the spam messages or robocalls you receive are forms of smishing or vishing. Here are some tips on how to avoid phishing scams. Due to the rise in remote work, phishing is more popular than ever, and we expect it to remain a huge problem for individuals, corporations, and governments. Phishing scams can be quite sophisticated, so even if you're computer literate or use an antivirus software, you need to keep your eyes peeled. Scrutinize every email or SMS message that hits your inbox. If someone sends you a URL or a file, don't open it unless you can verify the source. And I'm not just telling you to look at the sender's email address or phone number. Try to contact the organization or person who supposedly wrote that email to verify its authenticity. There are some things you should never send through an email or text message. If someone asks you to type out your social security number or credit card info in an email or text, ignore them. Your bank won't ask for this stuff on such an insecure platform, and neither will the IRS or any other reputable company. Some scammers are bold enough to fish through phone calls. They may even impersonate the police, the bank, or your employer. If an unknown number calls and asks for money or sensitive information, hang up. You can always call back using an official phone number from the organization's website. To reduce your chances of being fished, set up spam filters in your email client. You may also want to install an antivirus software and disable website notifications in your browser. Since phishing attacks are so common, I suggest taking some preventative measures to reduce their impact. Use a password manager to create unique passwords for every account and enable two-factor authentication on all websites, as it will lock out scammers even if they have your password. You can also activate a fraud alert through a credit bureau to prevent new lines of credit from opening under your name. I hope this makes you a little more cognizant of all the different types of phishing scams that are out there. Stay safe, stay secure, and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.